Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for April, February 22nd, 2023. It is Ash Wednesday and we are together this morning for Daily Prayer. Let's go ahead and get started. Today is, as I said, Ash Wednesday. Our service will be at noon today and only in person. It is National Margarita Day, National Walking the Dog Day, 22 day. Oh, 222. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Be Humble Day and Cook a Sweet Potato Day. Go ahead and get started. Let us worship God. God sent Christ into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God's love endures forever. God is our refuge and strength, a present help and trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, God's love endures forever. Our reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 13, starting with verse 18. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. The cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, and another sixty, and another thirty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our reading for today from Matthew chapter 13 is an explanation of the parable that we heard a few days ago. Um, This parable of the sower, also the parable of, you know, different kinds of soils. So the sower just throws all of these seeds about. We talked a little bit about this, um, but broadly speaking, we're talking about uh, Jesus is just sort of casting out this, this message to this big group of people and doesn't necessarily know who's going to re- who's there for the right reasons, who's there for the wrong reasons. There are some for whom it's going to sort of well up and they're going to hear this word, this good news, of the kingdom of heaven, and yet it's not going to take root deep enough for it to really um, last that long. There are some who are just not going to hear it. There are some who are going to hear it, and and it's just going to be overwhelmed by everything else that they're dealing with in their life. And there are some for whom it will sort of fully grow and mature into something broader and wider. And it's interesting, and this is something I've noticed just this this last time reading through Matthew, um, as we've been doing this. Jesus tells this story about different types of hearers. 
And then we have this aside, and it seems to be something that happens afterwards. This is not something that where the disciples are sort of interrupting Jesus' teaching in the middle of it and saying, oh, tell us what that means. But later on they ask, okay, what did that mean? Which kind of jars with our uh, assumption maybe that the disciples are good soil. <laughs> They're the ones that are going to, you know, receive this word and it's going to grow up and, and be full. And that's eventually where things are going to go, but they don't really look like good soil right now. Which tells us a few things. Sometimes people can appear as one type of soil, soil and actually turn out to be a different kind. Maybe also there's what Matthew is teaching us through these sort of two being connected in this way is that the type of soil that you metaphorically are or someone else might be is not a permanent state. There are those who hear the word and immediately will not receive it because of things that have happened to them, because of the church trauma that they have experienced. Maybe they've had bad experiences with people in the church. That could be direct, it could be indirect. Maybe uh, it wasn't a great interaction with, you know, a loved one or a family member. Maybe they've heard some bad press, that sort of thing, right? There's, there's lots of reasons why people might not listen to the good news of the gospel. One of those reasons is sometimes we're really, really, really bad at presenting that good news as good because we don't actually live it out. But that's a different thing. However, while the disciples aren't receiving it as sort of readily as one might hope, Jesus is speaking with them. And he tells them about why it is that he's teaching in parables. And he is telling them what the parables mean, which are, it's, it's kind of what the parables are not meant to do, right? They're, they're just sort of these stories and they're uh, intended to be this juxtaposition without a whole lot of explanation. And here Jesus is giving an explanation. Well, this means this, this means this, this means this. Which says to me that Jesus is, metaphorically, removing stones, removing weeds from the disciples. He is making them into good soil so that they might actually understand what's going on here. We've talked over the last couple of days about, and over the last month or so, right? about this idea of maybe gardening and weeding and, and that sort of image as this helpful thing as we continue to come back to these spiritual matters, these issues that maybe we've been dealing with. It's not just a one and done thing. We, we go back again and there's this pattern of living that we go through and part of that is sort of um, lifted up to us from those who have come before us in the liturgical seasons in that pattern. Today we begin the season of Lent, where we stop and we reflect on our own mortality. We think about how we might, in this particular season of Lent, do things different. Maybe there's something in our life that we need to cut out and say, this doesn't need to have something in, to do with my life. Maybe it's something that we need to add in. Maybe we haven't been so good with our devotions or our journaling. Whatever it is, is an intentional time to prepare for the coming of Christ and Easter. For the ultimate good news that transcends every other good news. We prepare ourselves and we work together to prepare each other to be good soil. The season of Lent is a, a time of intentional gardening, of weeding, of removing those stones from our lives so that we might better produce a, a 30 or 60 or 90 fold duplication of the faith that we have. 
that's sharing with others. That's receiving within ourselves a, a, a strengthening of that faith. One of the blessings that we have in, in all of the accounts, basically, is how not impressive the disciples are. They really aren't. We see this from most of the patriarchs as well, and the matriarchs. And we see them messing up over and over, and we see in, in them ourselves. We see the times when we have tried really hard, see the times when we have failed spectacularly. And yet we, like them, get up, learn from our mistakes, and carry on. And so in the season of Lent, we gather as the people of God. We gather and receive a mark of the cross, reminding us of our mortality, reminding us that we must bear the cross with Christ. And we enter into this intentional, special season of preparation and care. So I invite you to join with me in the Litany for Penitence. Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgot, forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have not listened to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess to you, O God, all of our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives. We confess to you, O God. our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you, O God. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, we confess to you, O God. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us, we confess to you, O God. A 
Accept our repentance, O God, for the wrongs we have done, for our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, O God. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, O God. <laughs> Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world, by the cross and passion of our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of Christ's resurrection. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and keep your whole being, spirit, soul, and body free from every fault in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining me for daily prayer today for Ash Wednesday. Hope that you are able to join us in person at noon today. If you are not, then find another place where you can uh, receive the imposition of ashes. It's, uh, it can be a very meaningful practice. Thank you for joining me as we begin this Lenten journey. Join me tomorrow for some more daily prayer. You can, of course, subscribe on YouTube if you haven't done so already. You can also subscribe on Substack and get this emailed to you every day. Or you can also subscribe on Spotify and listen to it. And it'll pop up in your notifications there as well. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA, 2018 edition, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Join us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Thank you for joining me. Have a faithful Lent, and we will see you next time.